Hello, Mike Waller here at Britannia Motorcycles, welcoming you to another installment in our BSA 250 Trials by Build. Got the frame and forks all done, as uh, you remember. And for those of you who are watching the fork one, um, I want to mention that if you thought I'd over tightened the head bearings, it was just a temporary thing. A, I'm going to put new bearings in, but also I just tightened it to grip the two yokes so they didn't flop about when I was fitting the forks and things. So don't worry, they'll be at the right tension when the bike is finished. What we're going to do today is our nice new rock shocks arrived from the UK. I really recommend these. They are wonderful. Plus, although they're a little more expensive than uh, some, they're completely rebuildable. So if, like me, you keep falling off and running into things, you bend a rod, you damage anything, you can just buy that one little bit from RockShox and rebuild your, uh, your units. We're also going to put on rear mudguard and front mudguard. And this we're going to mount using one of uh, Sammy Miller's nice fork mounts. These are really good because they act as a fork brace as well. Um, any of you that remember these forks on the later Triumph Twins with the stupid little bit of wire um, it, that held the mudguard on, it allowed them to flex something terrible. So that is a great addition. We're also going to make the um, aluminium seat pan that acts both as a base for the seat and the sides here help to uh, protect the, the air filter in there. So we're going to do all that and uh, we're also going to make up some little um, dished washers. You know the type that they have on like TY250s which you can buy. Well I've made a little uh, press that we're going to make two for here. So in fact we'll start with that. We'll move over to the press. So here we are with everything you need to make some dished washers. What I'm using is uh, a one inch washer with a quarter inch hole. For obvious reasons I'm using a quarter inch bolt to uh, put the suspension units on. These are called fender washers in the States. I can't remember if they're anything other than plain washers at home. But uh, I use stainless steel ones on these because I'm going to use all stainless steel fasteners. Then what we have is a two-piece press here. It's dished on the female side and there's a corresponding dish to this male side. It goes in there. Put this in with the uh, the part you're going to have on the outside downwards because you're going to dish it this way. That goes in like so. You'll notice there's a hole through this. It should really be a quarter inch hole then you could actually slide something through and hold everything in line. But um, the bits of stock I made this out of happen to have a 5 16th hole in so you can line them up easily enough as it is. So then that goes on the top of there. Everything's nicely seated. That's where, of course, having a pin through would help. But when do I ever do anything the right way? A couple of ton of pressure on it. And there we have one dished washer. So we'll make ourselves another one. You know, I really must make this with a proper pin in. And there we go, two nicely dished washers. So let's go and put them on and put the rock shocks on. We take our uh, temporary struts off. bottom 
I have some fancy bolts to put in as well with uh, mushroom cap tops. And don't they look smart? But better than that, they work. They certainly help me get over logs and things of that sort. There we go. Now we'll do front mud guards. So here we go with the front mud guard. Now, as I mentioned before, these uh, these forks. Um, because they were selling so many of these bikes in the US got away from the uh, the British thread forms the British standard cycle and British standard fan and so on and they actually used the unified thread form that uh, was common in America so these are quarter inch UNF so we'll pop this in Don't have much luck with bolts when you're watching me, do I? There we go. Usually it's the last one that's awkward, but... Today looks like it's going to be the first one. To be sure, I'm not worth it. Don't really know whether it's worth watching me do this. It's a bit boring, but if where you are is like it is in uh, upstate New York at the moment, where it's snowing and uh, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, minus 10 centigrade, you might as well sit at home and watch me doing this. I must admit, I'm pretty keen on watching people work myself. It's often a lot more fun than actually doing the work. Now, as I say, the beauty of, uh, of this particular fault mounting is that it's also a really good brace. With the wheel spindle in, we're going to be good and rigid. So, next thing is to put our mudguard on, get it centred. Actually, 
isn't that interesting? The little casting mark is about right where we want to be. So we might just use that and then it won't show anywhere. Just check to see if it's in the in the middle. Just there from that side. It's there from that side. So yes, we're going to drill. Right there, like that. Now, it's never ceased to amaze me the number of times I've put my guards on, marked the two holes, drilled them both, and then when you put it back on, one of them isn't where it should be. So, what I tend to like to do is put one on and then uh, drill the other one in situ. Or reducing human error. Here we'll do the back one because obviously it'd be a bit awkward to drill this one. Plastic. On the finished bike, what I like to do with these is actually put the bolt through from underneath and use one of those nice acorn nuts on the top. There we go. Wasn't that exciting, putting a mudguard on. All right, now we'll move to the back mudguard. First thing I want to show you is the actual bracket. On the standard frame, it comes out to about here. So what I always do is shorten it and make it about two inches long. You'll notice there's a hole in the top. This is going to be the bottom mounting for the oil tank. And also where the mudguard mounts here, I really dislike having to fiddle around with, with nuts and bolts. So anything like this, I always just bronze a nut on the back to be a, a captive nut there. Then all you've got to do is put a bolt through from this side and screw it in. So let's mark this mounting first. Now the first thing I've done is put a little mark on halfway across so that I know I'm, uh, I'm lined up because this is on the centre line of the frame. Then we know it's going to go just above the swinging arm. Make sure our little line is centred. That should be good. So that's there, and where our two lines are going to intersect, that will be a good point to drill our hole. Now, of course, we need a bolt. Which 
I should have had ready, but of course I didn't. Anyway, here we go. One bolt, one washer, and as I say, we uh, we don't have to mess around trying to hold nuts on. We can just fasten that straight in there. Let's zoom you out a little. Do you actually have to move up? Now we can do the top. See, it's the same place on both sides. that in there. This side, just in the same place, right on the edge of the, the rim there. Now we have our rear mud guard in looking straight. Excellent. So now we'll move on to the seat pan. First step is to make a cardboard template. So you need to have obviously a piece of cardboard big enough to do it. Uh, if you don't you can always stick a couple of pieces together. I've marked a line down the centre of this so we can line up with the frame and with the centre of the mud guard. Then the next thing you're going to need is a pair of compasses. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use the compass to follow the contour of the mud guard. Now, when you do it, you stay perpendicular to the edge of the, the card. Don't, if you start going like this, when you cut it out, it's not going to fit. So See if we can manage this without, so put it on. And go around, touching the mud guard with one side. Pencil. With the other. Sometimes it works out perfectly, as good your hand is, and sometimes you have to do a little bit of adjusting. 
and sometimes you have to throw it away and do it again. So let's see how we got on today. Slight, irreg whoops. Slight irregularity you can take up. I always put a, a rubber trim around this edge here so See, I didn't quite follow the pencil line because it didn't look right, but apparently it is. And there we are. Let me just check that you can see what I can see. Yep. So that looks fine. As I say, we can always just adjust that a little bit. It comes nicely to where I want it, which is just to the suspension units. So the next thing we're going to do is, excuse me, we're going to mark off how far we want it to come up, which is to there. And then we're also going to mark the center line of the tube of both sides. that there because that is where we're going to come to so now we're going to draw a line from there to there from there to there that's going to be our fold and then we'll mark out along here as to where it's going to be. So first of all we'll cut it straight across there It's like being back at school isn't it? Now as you can see we're going to bend it there and bend it there and then we'll mark across here to that. So let's make sure we've got our marks at the front where we want them. That is going to go to there. Right, let's move you over a little and we'll show you marking this out. And then thusly, and you can tighten it up a little bit. Make 
so like so and if you keep going long enough you'll end up with a swan so let me move this back move you back back a little bit so we're going to take a piece out of here on each side because like so I have a friend who was a sheet metal worker in the Air Force who does all this sort of thing just by eye and it always fits noise the hell out of you While I'm wandering around, I thank all those people who've uh, who subscribed and uh, who've been following this build and looked at the other the videos I have. Makes me feel wanted. That is really just quite nice with our rubber trim on. That will be perfect. So, let's get something heavy, excuse me, to just hold that in place. Then we can mark where we want that to be, like that. Similarly on the other side. Where I'm marking it is just on the center line of the tube. It looks quite nice if it just goes along that line, if it follows, if it follows that line down there in the center and, and here as well. This side right. There we go. Now then, we'll do this in place so I can cut it out and you can you can see what I mean. Scissors. goes to show we're all human. There we go. Let me make these nice straight lines when we, we cut the alloy. So you do exactly the same on the other side. I won't bore you with that. I'll finish cutting this and then we'll lay it on the alloy, cut that out and show you how to do the bends. Now we have our template finished, we can transfer it to a sheet of 16 gauge aluminium. Whenever you're cutting stuff out like this, try and make at least one edge go along there, you know, saves your work and that's always worthwhile.
Now what we're also going to do here is mark the points where we're going to do our bends. You notice as well I've got this laid down on a on a towel. Alloy scratches rather easily and it just saves you work having to polish the scratches out. It also stops it sliding around while you're working on it. There we go. Uh, 16 gauges uh, is quite thick. If you've got a really big pair of, of shears you can probably cut it. But I'm going to use the jigsaw because it's, uh, it's a little easier and it's going to give us a better edge which we can just sand up and, and make nice rather than possibly bending it, forcing shears round. So let me get the uh, jigsaw and we will press on. Right, don't forget your safety glasses when you're doing this because bits fly all over the place. Towel appearing, so I guess we're a bit close to the the edge there. All right. this out of the way
do this on the table where there's a slot so let's move over there all right let's see what we do if we put it over our slot so we've got more even pressure table there I think but as you see if you do things in the right place it's a lot easier so now we're going to put some bends in this we're actually going to do it here What we're going to do is put that on the edge. Of course, if you've got a, a proper break, then uh, this is easy to do. But what all I'm going to do is put that on there like that, on the edge of the table. Put a clamp on, and then we can just, with a nice rubber hammer, we'll just bend that over, turn it round, and do the other side. Then we can put it on the bike. So let me get the clamps and the rubber hammer. Now I normally do this on a different table which isn't so thick so I've only managed to find one clamp which will go round this but uh, I'll have more bend reasonably easily so I think we'll be alright. The other thing of course is the frame is actually like that so we're not going to uh, take this to a right angle. So there's one. Okay. Again, 
just too, too big. Put it up on the frame with a couple of little clamps and do the last bit of forming around the tube. <laughs> 